All right. This piece is about Harriet Tubman, Moses. And the legend is that when Tubman would come south and leading the slaves back, and they would take a break in a secure place. She would do quilt blocks. The quilt in this particular painting is a completed quilt. And <clears throat> it appears that she's actually putting the quilt together. The, this different squares in the quilt is a plan for escaping from slavery and the route to take and the areas where the food will be, how to move so that you'll be difficult to follow all the way to the crossroads, which was thought of as being the Ohio River, generally at Cincinnati, and crossing over into Cincinnati and possibly into Canada, but to freedom. Now, <clears throat> the quilt was hung on a regular line, uh, like the women would wash the quilts and hang them out, and the master would see that quilt, and it was nothing unusual. But when they hung this particular quilt out there, that was time to get ready the next morning to make the escape. A song would be sung all of those that were in the know about this plan of escape. Now, everybody didn't always know. Mm -hmm. Everybody didn't always know. And that has to do with that factor that we talk about as being the Uncle Tom factor. See, Uncle Tom was an end of the loop. So they would sing this song, and the Negro spirituals, uh, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. When I kneel on my knees, facing the rising sun, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. And of course, after course, the song goes on. Well, that's telling them when they're going to make that escape. It's going to be before the sunrise. In the meantime, each square communicates to the escapees what to prepare prior to the escape. They would steal tools that would be helpful to them en route. Um, they would also sometimes steal transportation, a wagon, and mutes or horses to pull that way. And then they would start the direction out of there. And when they came out, they followed what they call the drunken path, meaning you, you go in a, in a way like a drunk man would, staggering. And so you don't go in a straight line. You go in this line that kind of wiggles along. And they would follow from there. If it's at uh, daytime, they're going to follow the orientation of the sun. They know if your left shoulder is in the east, and your right rather your left shoulder is in the west, your right shoulder is in the east, leaving south, you go in north. Mm -hmm. And so they would orientate and follow that. At night, they, uh, in the daytime, they would also follow the flight of the wild geese. And here are the wild geese. And 
this particular square here, and they are in there in other places as well. They would follow the bear track, which you see over here. And the bear track um, was uh, the route that you follow to find the food. Because if the bear could find the food, and there was food there for you to like berries and uh, honey and a lot of other good things like fish as well. So you follow the bear track. And if it was at night, they would follow the North Star. And when they would get to the crossroads, which is indicated here, that would be the Ohio River and generally uh, the, to Cincinnati. So they would need to get across that river. And there was always some, someone there that was in on this plan, and a boat would be waiting to get them across to the other side. When they got across to the other side, this block um, here is to dig a cabin, which was to make a um, log cabin, and this red square in the center of it represents the fireplace. And you would get clothes, and clothes would be provided for you to change out of your sleeve garb and dress up. And so the bow tie indicates the dressing up in this. So every block in here is indicated of this plan of escape. And I was mentioned about the tools being stolen at the beginning. This one here, I believe, um, my memory serves me correctly, that's uh, one that indicates two. There's another one called the Monkey Ranch, which I, for some reason I didn't put it in. Um, now, during all this time, there is um, the group that's always dealing with uh, getting the slaves out, uh, helping the slavery to come to an end. And James Brown, uh, uh, John Brown, was one of the leading uh, persons that we know in history and his story. Uh, but John's plan uh, included an insurrection of the slaves in the South. And that he wanted the slaves to uh, rebel and create a huge army for, uh, and fight their way out. That Hobbes Ferry thing, the one there to that arsenal, that was reason, one of the reasons going there was to get those weapons to, to take to that uh, group of army, that army that they had made. And the person that he, he felt could get that to happen was Frederick Douglass. And he invited Frederick Douglass to his home and spent the night and told him what the plan was. And uh, Douglass thanked him but turned him down because he saw uh, from another side of this and didn't believe that that was the way to do it. He, uh, Douglas, was uh, working with Garrett in the newspaper industry. He had his own newspaper that was called the North Star. So we have uh, John Brown uh, given uh, a gun to Frederick Douglass. Douglass is showing his newspaper indicating that the pen is mightier than the sword. And now um, we have the, the wild geese that you see on this side that I mentioned before going across the river of these silhouettes in here as well. All of this is under the guidance of ancestors, the spirit world guiding them, angels, if you will, that are guiding them. And I had done this entire painting, and it was complete in my thinking. But it kept coming to me that the real theme is really the slaves escaping. And I, I 
only have the hero of that, but there is no slave here that we can really see. So this figure, uh, the way I imagine it was very much like you see it here, but there was no room. There was no place on this space that I was working on for it. And I pondered it for some time and finally saw where he should go and why he should go there. And in developing this particular figure, um, you'll notice that um, for quickly the yoke that's around his neck with the four beans coming up and steel around his neck, and you can't even lie down at night and, and uh, sleep. And they, he was, would be a habitual runaway, so they put bells on it so that they could hear and know where he was all the time. My grandfather, my maternal grandfather, whose father was a slave in Mississippi and possibly Alabama, uh, <clears throat> said, all you do to is you dob each bell full of mud so the bell doesn't 